there's only a few SUVs that really get me excited. And 518 Reasons is standing right in front of us from Tampa Land Rover, giving us the 2023 Land Rover Defender P525 V8 90, which is for everything. You get safari windows. This is for rugged desert use, everyday use, fording through water. This will have the best clearance out of all of them, whether it's the Wrangler 392 or the Ford Bronco Raptor, starting with your premium LED headlamps and daytime runnings. The fender badging in the front that goes into your active grille on the lower LED fog lamps. Approach angle with the air suspension at 30.1 degrees. Ride clearance at 8.5 inches with the air suspension. Fording through water over 35 inches with this air suspension setup. We get the front parking sensors and you have your front camera. So you got the 360 degree as well. So you can see all around the vehicle and you would want this, especially when you're doing your trail, any rock crawl, anything like that. Upgraded 22 inch wheels, five spoke with the Defender badging, black large brake calipers with Land Rover on them. So you got all of the aesthetic cues that gives that sporty performance. And if it doesn't, you got the V8 badging right here in the gloss black. Four way independent suspension, air suspension, and adaptive dynamics, all wheel drive with twin speed transfer box, electronic power assist steering, Trail Response 2 with Dynamic Program, Configurable Terrain Response, Rear Electronic Active Differential, Shark Fin Antenna Houses, Clear View, Rear View Mirror, which where it's stationed, it's going to make it a little bit higher in the sense of actually visibility purposes when you're using it in a day in and day out. But it's nice that they still throw it in there. It would have been nicer if they maybe put it right here where the Land Rover badging is for your fifth tire. But more excitingly, a quad exhaust setup, the iconic LED turn signals that come into play, towing up to 8,200 pounds, which is the best in class comparing to any of the rivals and you still pack performance. 5.0 liter supercharged V8, producing 518 horsepower and 416 pound-feet of torque that's paired to an eight-speed automatic transmission, achieving 15 MPGs in the city, 19 MPGs in the highway. Zero to 60, 4.9 seconds at top speed, 149 miles per hour. The only disadvantage here is to go in, the car goes a little heavy, you have some storage here in the door panel. This is obviously where you would be able to close it, defender badging, underneath tools for your spare tire. A home plug back here, LED interior lights. You could raise and lower the suspension with a 12 volt. And when you do that, you just simply hold the button and it'll raise up. And you can lower it, which is a really cool feature that a Land Rover gives to make it easier for the loading. And you can see it's a very easy load space when it's all the way to the ground. You can fold these seats at a 40-20-40 split, increasing the cargo. Safari windows, a little bit easier to see in the interior with a large pano moon roof. This is the V8 supercharged we've been waiting to get. Let's go inside, start up so you can hear that exhaust note. Going inside the Defender V8 90 model, I would recommend getting running boards. It will make it a little bit easy. Headroom at 40.6 inches, legroom 39.1 inches, which is going to be the same as the back. 14-way power seat adjustment, heated, ventilated with the perforated. It is ebony on ebony on ebony. The Defender starts off with storage that is on the passenger side with a USB and a pass through behind the Pivi Pros with grab handles, as you can see my hands going through. The air vents are going to be flat as well as the dash. 11.4 inch screen, Pivi Pro infotainment screen with Meridian sound system. It's a 700 watt system. HD radio, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, interactive driver display, Bluetooth connectivity. Switch to reverse, 360 degree reverse camera. And you can also click on these icons here. Go to the off-road. You can also do it this way. 
to slide through quicker. Working underneath to try to make a minimalistic approach. These buttons are multi-function. Push on it for your ventilated and heated seat switches. Push back for your climate control. Push this button here and this will change the speed for the air condition or heater fan. Push this button here and you go on to this side and this will go through all of your different terrain to make it easier for your everyday use or for your dynamic driving because this is a V8 crazy car. You can also do eco, gravel, snow, mud ruts, sand, rock crawl, wade, and you can put it onto auto. You can also touch the screen instead of just going through here. When you change the driver modes on the gauge cluster, it will show you what they are with a graphic behind it. It's a full digital reader. We have the navigation set on the other side of it, and it gives pretty much all the information in which you would need for your daily use. You can also change the configuration layout. Heads up display is set digital rear view mirror where you can simply use your mirror but because we have it i would use it four spoke steering wheel heated we get the paddle shifters adaptive cruise control lane keep assist and again the minimalistic look so these buttons are multi-functional to make it a little bit easier for your daily use 12 volt usb usb a with a storage pocket that you can put your key fob for the land rover defender 90 Pick this up and that's the cup holders. Behind that, wireless charging pad. It's gonna be a little bit sporty, but it's still pretty soft. Open up and it's a refrigerator that you can fit four 16.9 ounce water bottles. You just turn it on like that. And underneath, you have a pass-through, which this is the best part. When you buy a Land Rover, what you get is a box like this. Open up, and you're going to get some keychains for those key fobs, which makes it a little bit more special. And I like that we have that storage capacity underneath here because that pass-through really does optimize storage space, even on the driver's side, adding another little storage nook. The door panel... We get the exposed screws, which give the retro design, soft materials, pretty much everywhere to touch. One touch up and down for the windows. Memory for the passenger and driver. Upgraded Meridian sound system. We have 700 watts. A large storage pocket, but not really a beverage holder area, so you might want to just kind of lay it downwards. Now going into the back seat is the fun part. You open up the power adjustment seats here to fold it all the way forward. It does take a few seconds, but it gives you a little bit more entrance in which I can actually fit to get inside. For the back seats, headroom at 40.4 inches, leg space at 39.1 inches, which is quite a bit for a two-door SUV. Dual climate control in the back. USB, another USB, and heated rear seats. Air vents here stationed in the center, storage behind both of the front seats, and a connector behind them so you can hang up your clothes. On this side, you got the grab handle, your tweeter, that safari window with the LED interior lighting, and it's a large window with soft materials with a beverage or bottle holder with another storage pocket. Sitting into the center headroom is still no issue, nor is leg space, and the floor isn't completely flat, but I have a sufficient amount of feet, butt, and shoulder space, even though this is the smallest variant that they make. V8 Beast out, supercharged, 518 horsepower. It is not the heaviest. The Ford Bronco Raptor is, and this beats it zero to 60 and quarter mile. The Jeep Wrangler 392 is going to be the least heavy. It's also the fastest zero to 60 because it's just a crazy car, 6.4 liter Hemi. I mean, that was insane that they put that engine in there, but this will conquer more than that vehicle. So if you're not just looking for on-road performance, this thing can handle everything whether you're taking it out for the weekend, whether you're taking your kids to school. That's why it's such an exciting variant because you get the power, you could ford through water, best in class towing compared to all of the competition. And the pricing is really right at the same point as the competition. One thing right off the bat that I dislike though is even in dynamics, the auto start stop, you cannot turn it off. You have to physically push the button to turn it off. It still engages in dynamic, which in other variants, when you put it into sport or any type of dynamics, it immediately will cut that off because 
It's a V8. I'm not necessarily trying to save gas here. Obviously, I know what I bought. 461 pound-feet of torque. It's going to be less than the Wrangler 392. That's at 470. It's going to be more than the Ford Raptor Bronco. Red light. We're about to see that performance at that 4.90 to 60 as soon as it turns green. And here we go. Wow. I would be kidding you if I was not having fun because this is definitely a fun variant. The exhaust note filters in exactly the way it should. The sound deadening is amazing because this is a box. You're not going to have the same sound proof as you would in this compared to a Wrangler. The Wrangler is going to be a lot more noisy, but it's going to be a little bit more exhaust note that filters in, and it kind of should because it's a bigger V8 engine. As for the Ford Raptor Bronco twin turbo, the six cylinder, I just wish they would have went the other route and threw a V8 in because this is what you get. I mean, look at this. It is awesome. And it's just enough. It's not over the top. And when people see the vehicle, they're thinking, oh, this is an off-road variant. Not a big deal. This can beat regular sports cars. Now, obviously, for the price point, you would want it to go as fast as it is and to be able to conquer everything that it does, in which that's going to take me to some things I like and dislike. And we're going to start off with what I like about the vehicle. How they have configured the dash where it's so user-friendly that you can put a large documentation behind the PIVI Pro. You have charging ports on the passenger side. Everything's accessible. I would definitely option the refrigerator because I use 16.9 ounce water bottles in which I can fit four of them. So I'm taken care of with four occupants. With five, you know what, just give them a cold bottle to start off with. The second thing that I like about the vehicle is you sit up higher than all of the rivals. This has a better clearance and an adjustable suspension because it's air suspension. And the last thing that I like is how much space we have in the back. The safari windows and all the windows that are back there just make this thing so much more welcoming and open. And it just feels alive in the back seat. We're going to check the turn radius and do a hard brake right here so you can see that. And turn radius, the 90 should get about two lanes, and it does. And let's rock and roll. <sighs> the funny thing about that is if you notice, there was a Tesla coming up. They started slowing down because they thought, ah, it's a darn Land Rover. Those things are slow. They're not. Three things that I dislike, you already heard the first. The second thing that I dislike about the vehicle is for the seat belts for either the driver or passenger side. They're so far back that it's hard. Obviously you get used to it. I just wish it kind of extended out. Dynamics of the vehicle, if you need to move, you can. Does it feel boaty? No. It actually feels really good and tight. The steering has a little weight to it, which any of the variants that we're comparing against is going to have some off-road capability. So they'll have some maneuverability in the steering and it will have some weight to it. But I mean, you know what you're getting, especially when you get into this trim line. The V8 is really the only way I would go because how many more years are they really going to be making this? The last thing that I dislike about the vehicle is that clear view mirror because of where they have put the camera. In other variants, they put the camera a little bit lower. This car is tall to begin with. So when you put it on the top, it does make it hard to actually use it. Here we go. <laughs> you know, I don't think I'd be eco-friendly at all with the V8. I'd probably just drive it like crazy. And the same thing if I did the 392 Wrangler, that's my favorite vehicle. But this has changed my mind about off-roading vehicles because this is more quiet. It's more soft in the suspension. The seats are a little bit wider. The interior space is more open. And this is the 90. So imagine doing the 110. You have even more space and third row capabilities. And the towing is insane. You can tow a larger boat with this vehicle and not have to worry about it. In 
and yet this is smaller than a sports car and just as quick. Obviously the price escalates into the six figures, but you're gonna have the same thing when you go into the Bronco or the 392. So I don't think you're gonna be disappointed with either of the three, but I do think this one has a little bit more speciality to it, especially because it's a Land Rover and the times that we're in where they're diminishing the V8s. When you start putting all these numbers and you start sounding nerdy like me about cars, you really appreciate how the drive is and how quick it is to a zero to 60 number. I like to thank Land Rover Tampa for giving us this 2023 Land Rover Defender P52590 model for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, I don't know what you're waiting for. Click the next video on the subscribe button, check out the merchandise website, Instagram, leave a comment and a like.